Zenora, I'm glad you came. I've been expecting you. You have? Yes, the Lord told me to expect you this morning. I am here to help you Zenora but you also need to help yourself and seek the Lord at all times. I, I couldn't resist the urge, Ms. Naledi, I fell back into old habits again. It's okay, Zenora. You're human, everyone stumbles sometimes. What's important is that you're here now, seeking help and guidance. You've accomplished the biggest and most difficult step, that is, genuinely wanting to change and seeking help. I have some advice for you. Firstly, you need to recognize the patterns that lead you to drink. Is it stress? Loneliness? Identifying these triggers will help you better cope with them. You need to find new coping mechanisms. Try to pray, make positive affirmations and keep busy, read a book or take a walk each time you recognize an unhealthy pattern. Just do the same positive thing repeatedly and before you know it, you'll adopt new habits. I understand. I will try that. Thank you. Secondly, you must constantly pray in your heart, seeking God's strength and guidance. Remember, forgiveness is key, both for others and for yourself. Your worth is in Christ alone, not in what others say or think about you. Yes. Additionally, remove all alcohol from your house and disconnect yourself from anything connected to your past bad habits. And remember, each time you face temptation, forgive yourself and know that it's evil that tempts you. Use God's word to destroy all the arrows of the devil. Resist the devil, Zenora, and he will flee from you. But remember, it's only possible to resist the devil when you're in God's presence and obedient to him. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Naledi. Let's take a walk in the meadow. The fresh air and nature will do you good. Zenora, I want to share something with you. It's about reclaiming your peace and standing firm in your identity. Yes, please, Ms. Naledi. Walk away from any conversations or situations that don't bring you peace. Refuse to entertain negative thoughts about yourself. Recognize that negativity is not of God, it's the devil's work trying to pull you away from your divine purpose. But it's hard sometimes, especially when people try to bring me down. I understand, but remember, you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are no longer condemned. Defeat and failure are things of the past because you are a new creation in Christ. That's true. But what about those who disrespect me or try to belittle me? When someone like Jerus or anyone else disrespects you, remember that they are just projecting their own insecurities onto you. Instead of engaging in their negativity, just walk away. Ask them to leave if necessary. Remember the words of Jesus, he who has never sinned should throw the first stone. None of us are without fault, and it's not our place to judge others. It's easier said than done, Naledi. I know it's not easy, but leave everything for God and hold your peace. Trust in him to handle the situation. He knows your heart and will fight your battles for you. Remember, you are a child of God, loved and cherished beyond measure. Don't let anyone take that away from you. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Naledi. Let's pray together, Zenora. May God grant you the strength to overcome this challenge and may his love surround you always. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ, I know that you have promised to never leave nor forsake me. Guide me to fulfill the purpose for which you created me, and grant me the strength to forgive myself. Lead me to surround myself with individuals who sincerely seek my well-being. If it aligns with your divine plan for me to live apart from my family, please open the path, O Lord. My sole aspiration is to worship you with sincerity and devotion, both now and for eternity. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. I feel as if a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Thank you, Ms. Naledi. To God be the glory now and forevermore. I hope the traffic won't be too bad. Nikesha locks up her bakery for the night, a sense of unease gnawing at her as she walks home alone. Lord, protect me from my nightmares and guide me in this battle against evil. As Nikesha walks, 
two shadowy figures emerge from the darkness, their intentions clear. Hey, you, Nikisha. What do you want? We know what you've been up to, gathering evidence against the GG Saw Club. You need to destroy it all, or else. I won't be intimidated by you. God is on my side, and he will fight for me. The thugs advance menacingly, their threats growing louder, but just as they're about to strike, the sound of a police siren pierces the night. Let's get out of here. This is a bad omen. I told you not to take this job. Attacking Christians is a very risky business. Let's go. Startled, the thugs head visited, then quickly disappear into the shadows. Thank you, Lord. You are my protector and my shield. From now on, I'll only walk outside when there's a crowd, and I won't leave my bakery late at night. I'll also encourage our customers to order online for added safety. Back at her bakery, Nikesha reflects on the events of the evening, reminding herself of the importance of prayer and discernment. Lord, I'm still waiting for a sign. Please guide me in the decision whether or not to publicly expose the GG Saw Club. Your will be done. How could this happen? How could Nikisha resist my spells? It's that irritating Christian Union and their prayers, Zuri. They've been interfering with our plans from the start. Then it's time we put an end to their meddling once and for all. Bring me the most powerful witch from Endor. We'll show them the true meaning of darkness. A few days later. Now, let the destruction begin. We'll bring down the Union and all who stand with them. As Zuri and the Witch unleash their dark spells, chaos erupts as a small part of the Union's headquarters and Union is engulfed in flames. The Union staff are restless and they immediately start praying. A fire that I created has started to burn parts of the Union. Let's finish them off. We'll go to their territory. <laughs> Wait, Zuri. This is as far as we are going. We can't risk getting burned. Those people are Christians, you know. I can see the Union's building from here, let's cast our spells from here. Remind me not to call you again, I can't believe that you are scared of mere mortals. Let's cast our spells, we don't have any time to waste. Meanwhile, inside the Union's office, Miss Nality, Nikesha, Zenora, and a Hannah kneel in prayer, their voices raised in fervent supplication. Heavenly Father, we stand against the forces of darkness. Lord, you are our strength and our shield. Protect us from the evil one and his schemes. Lord, we declare your power and authority over all principalities and powers of darkness. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb, we break every chain and destroy every work of evil that seeks to harm us in the Union. We stand firm in our faith, knowing that you, Lord Jesus, will fight for us. We will hold our peace and watch as you deliver us from our enemies. We declare victory over darkness for we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against us shall ever prosper and every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment shall be condemned. Thank you for our victory is guaranteed in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As the pastor and women pray, their voices rising in unity, a powerful presence fills the room, dispelling the darkness and scattering the forces of evil. Outside, Zuri and the witch reel back in shock as their spells falter and their plans crumble before them. Ah, ah, someone help me. I have been struck by lightning. Help, help. By God's grace and his divine power, the Union's headquarters is saved from destruction, and Zuri and the Witch are defeated, their dark plans thwarted by the power of prayer and the unwavering faith of those who stand for righteousness. Fleeing from the confrontation, 
the witch from Ender sought refuge among her fellow witches back in Ender, deeming it a safer haven. No, it can be. I better return to Endor. I will not die in your battle in this foreign land. Count me out of this. Fine, go. I think we lost the battle because of your bad luck. I will win the war on my own. Watch and learn. Good luck with that but from what I saw, those who were against us are more and mightier than those who are for us. I'm out of here. Mers, Naledi, show yourself. I know who you are, hiding behind your facade of a middle-aged woman. Face me now and let's settle this once and for all. She's nowhere to be seen. Scared, are we? <laughs> Come on, Ms. Naledi. Unleash your powers if you dare. I'm ready for you. You called for me, Zuri. Here I am. What? I didn't expect you to actually show yourself. You have challenged the power of the Union and caused havoc in this city, Zuri. And now, you must face the consequences. Zuri's confidence wavers as she stares into the unwavering gaze of Miss Nallery, her anger fading into fear. What? What are you going to do to me? Justice will be served, Zuri. But know this, it is not too late for you to turn away from darkness and embrace the light. By the power of darkness, I command you to obey me. Spirits of evil, rise and do my bidding. But as Zuri's efforts prove futile, Miss Nowady stands firm, her eyes blazing with divine authority. Evil spirits, I command you, in the name of Jesus, in the name that's above all names, to leave this place and go to Hades, never to return. You have no power here. You think you can defeat me, Naledi? You're nothing but a mere mortal, a pawn in the grand scheme of things. What's this? But Miss Nowady remains undeterred, engaging Zuri in a fierce spiritual battle, her strength drawn from the power of the Lamb. As the battle rages on, Miss Nowady's resolve only grows stronger, her faith unwavering as she confronts Zuri head-on. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to cease your evil deeds and never rise again. I return all of the darkness to Hades in Jesus' name. Please, have mercy, forgive me. Your time is up, Zuri. The evil practices of the club must come to an end. May God have mercy on your soul. As Zuri falls to the ground, defeated, Miss Nowady stands tall, her victory complete as she brings an end to the darkness that threatened the Union and their community. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me from the clutches of darkness and breaking the chains of generational curses that have plagued my family for so long. I decree and declare that I am free from the evil connected to the GG Saw Club. It shall be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. This is unbelievable. I can feel it. The evil spirits are leaving me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for delivering me from malevolent spirits. The Lord has truly set me free, and I will walk in his light from this day forward. Later, Sage discovers that she is not alone in her deliverance. Many club members, too, have experienced freedom after the exposure of the cult and Zuri's defeat. I can't believe it. So many of us have been delivered from the darkness of the club's influence. To God be the glory now and forevermore. As Sage reflects on the newfound freedom experienced by herself and her fellow club members, she realizes the profound impact of the truth coming to light. Thank you, Lord, for using the exposure of the cult to bring deliverance to so many lives. Your power and grace know no bounds. With a renewed sense of purpose, Sage and her fellow club members embrace their newfound freedom, ready to walk in the light of truth and righteousness. Shut down the internet.
infamous GG Soft Club following allegations of fraud, occultic activities, and misappropriation of funds. See Nora, standing before a crowd of former club members, her voice filled with compassion and determination. My dear sisters, I know many of you have suffered greatly because of the club's influence. But there is hope. The Christian Union is here to offer free counseling services to help you heal and rebuild your lives. Let us not turn to substances or denial to numb our pain. Instead, let us run to God, who offers true solace and healing. Meanwhile, investigators comb through the club's records, uncovering evidence of wrongdoing and deception. Missing women's funds, stolen property documents, the list goes on. These club owners and executives have a lot to answer for. As the investigation unfolds, the full extent of the club's illicit activities comes to light, bringing a sense of justice to those who have been wronged. Former members of the GG Soul Club, we, the church, are here to help you heal from the trauma you've experienced. You are not alone. The churches and well wishers offer free counseling sessions to former club members, a beacon of hope in the midst of darkness. As the community comes together to support and uplift those affected by the club's actions, a new chapter of healing and restoration begins. Liz, Naledi, I have to share the amazing news. God has delivered me from the darkness of the club's influence. That's wonderful, Sage. Praise God for his faithfulness. Sage, this is just the beginning of your journey of deliverance. It's important to remember the lessons you've learned and to stay rooted in God's word. Reading the Bible daily is crucial for your spiritual growth. It's also important to walk in obedience, even when it goes against the flow of the world. Trusting in God and having unwavering faith in Him will sustain you through every trial. You must also recognize and break free from the patterns that led you into the club and the cycle of disobedience. Love everyone, but not everyone needs to be a part of your new life. Choose your friends wisely and be willing to make changes, even if it means changing jobs. Yes, I understand the importance of surrounding myself with positive influences. Most importantly, make God's word the standard for your life. Pray always and choose to follow Jesus with all of your heart. Ask him to help you obey him and lead the life he has predestined for you. Thank you, Ms. Naledi, for your wise counsel. I will do all that you've advised. And I will bring my daughters to the Union for Deliverance as well. With a renewed sense of purpose, Sage leaves the Union, ready to embrace her new life of freedom and obedience to God. In a shocking turn of events, the lawyers representing the GG Soft Club claim that the company responsible for producing their goods used harmful ingredients without their knowledge. They maintain that they believed their products were organic and safe for use. This is a developing story. What? Lies. All lies. They can't get away with this. I won't let them. As the tumultuous events draw to a close, it's evident that the power of prayer, faith, and standing firm in one's convictions can triumph over even the darkest of forces. Through the unwavering support of Miss Nality and the Christian Union, individuals like Zenora, Nikesha, and Sage found the strength to confront their pasts and stand against evil. The importance of recognizing destructive patterns, seeking forgiveness, and finding worth in Christ alone were highlighted as crucial elements in overcoming addiction and spiritual warfare. Removing toxic influences, staying connected to God through prayer and scripture, and surrounding oneself with positive influences were emphasized as essential strategies for maintaining spiritual strength. The courage displayed by Nikesha in the face of threats and intimidation serves as a testament to the power of faith over fear. Her decision to rely on God's protection and wisdom, coupled with practical measures to ensure her safety, illustrates the balance between faith and practical action in navigating life's challenges. The defeat of Zuri and the exposure of the GG Sa Club's nefarious activities underscore the eventual downfall of evil when confronted with the light of truth and righteousness. 
the provision of counseling and support services to former club members highlights the importance of compassion and redemption in healing broken lives. Ultimately, the lessons learned from these trials remind us of the enduring power of faith, the importance of discernment in choosing our paths and associations, and the transformative impact of God's grace in our lives. As we continue on our journey, may we be inspired to trust in God's guidance, stand firm in our convictions, and walk in the light of His truth. Thank you for watching this episode of Crimson Reverie. Watch out for the final episode, and if you haven't subscribed, we recommend doing so to receive notifications about upcoming content. Before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect, will of God. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, Casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ? Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 6.11 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. James 4.7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Galatians 5.16 says, This I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. 1 Peter 5, 8-9 says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Proverbs 3, 5-6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and be not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. John 8, 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Psalm 91, 4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. And Ephesians 5, 8 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly, acknowledging your sovereignty and power over all things. We thank you for the victories won, the deliverance experienced, and the strength you have provided throughout the trials we have faced. Your word assures us that you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. As we reflect on the challenges overcome and the lessons learned, we pray for continued guidance and wisdom in our journey ahead. Help us to remain steadfast in our faith, to trust in your protection and provision, and to walk in obedience to your word. Grant us the discernment to recognize destructive patterns in our lives and the courage to break free from them. May we find forgiveness and worth in Christ alone, knowing that our identity and value are found in you. Empower us to stand firm against the schemes of the enemy, to resist temptation, and to hold fast to the truth of your word. Let your light shine brightly within us, illuminating the path of righteousness and guiding us away from darkness. Father, we lift up all those who are still struggling, those who are in need of deliverance and healing. Pour out your grace and mercy upon them, and may they experience the freedom and restoration that can only come from you. 
Finally, we pray for your continued protection over us and our loved ones, guarding us against the attacks of the enemy and leading us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.